Mr. Armstrong wrote to the Church of God in 1982, and I quote, Jesus said in a prayer, I thank you, O Father, because you have hid these things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them unto babes. Babes in Christ. The Holy Bible is God's secret code. Without His Holy Spirit, it cannot be understood. Only the Holy Spirit gives spiritual comprehension. God has revealed truth, and God revealed truth to only one man. Jesus went on to say in Matthew 17, verse 11, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed, or determined to do, to John the Baptist. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Yes, they were determined to murder Jesus Christ. This series of videos will show how the scattered churches of God have turned their members away from Herbert Armstrong, as Christ said about John. They knew him not. Even so, these churches of God pretend not to know the last apostle. They have also turned their backs on Jesus Christ. Greetings, brethren and friends around the world. As I said in the introduction, Jesus Christ revealed truth to one man and one man only, Herbert W. Armstrong. Jesus said to the Philadelphians in Revelation 3 verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which you have. And then he warned them that no man take your crown. What is it that you and I must hold fast to. We are to hold fast to all the truth revealed to those who were called into the worldwide church of God. However, the majority entering into the churches of God after the death of Mr. Armstrong are being fed false doctrine. False doctrine. This is what we are told to hold fast to, brethren. Incredible human potential, mystery of the ages, the United States and British Commonwealth in prophecy, today uh, titled uh, Britain in prophecy. Of course, this is the 1967 edition. Jesus said, hold fast to that truth that was revealed. Now that phrase, according to Thayer's definition, means to have power, be powerful, and by holding fast, you have power to be chief, Thayer says, by, be master of, to rule. By holding fast, you learn to rule yourself. He goes on, to get possession of. You have possession of revealed truth. He goes on, to become master. You become a master of your own salvation. And once again, to take hold of truth when defining those words, you find no, absolutely no authority given to anyone to change, correct, nor to reject this truth. However, let us be honest. Whether you are sitting in those churches of God or not, you personally have allowed men to exchange what you were supposed to hold fast to and replace it with false doctrine. You willingly took off your crown, which Jesus Christ was offering you for holding fast to the truth. And of course you gave it to a man. Simply said, you let a man take your crown. The definition hold fast only allows you to reject a false minister or a lay member who tries to draw you away from God's government as established by Jesus Christ in His church. And it gives you the authority to reject false doctrine. Thousands of worldwide Church of God members 
have not applied the principle taught by Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. And that faith Jesus Christ tells you to hold fast to. Prove your own selves, says Paul. Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates? Ask yourself, dear brethren, can Christ be in me if I have accepted false doctrine? Can he be in you? Can Christ be in me if I sit in a church of God that has rejected the teachings and the doctrines of the 20th century apostle? You know, believing the truth, your life depends on it. Notice Jesus talking to his apostles after his resurrection from the dead in John chapter 20 and verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you the Holy Spirit. That authority to send was given to apostles and apostles only. Jesus Christ's apostles. And the only way truth would be revealed is through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Revealed by God through His Spirit. Christ gave authority to apostles. Now with that said, He did not give authority to any presiding evangelist, any pastor, any preaching elder, any local elder, deacon, lay member. Nor did He give authority to a man like David Pack, who like Joe Tukach Sr. lays claim to the title of apostle. And furthermore, he has the ridiculous idea that he, David Pack, is Elijah and Herbert W. Armstrong is Moses. Neither does Gerald Flurry have the authority, who may, of course this man lays claim to many biblical titles as well as apostle. Notice Christ reveals how God's government descends from the top down with the Father in charge. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 40, Jesus said to his apostles, now you can go to verse 1 and you can start reading from there, he was talking to his apostles, He that receives you, an apostle, receives me, Jesus Christ, and he that receives me, receives him that sent me, receives the Father. Again, he has authority from the top down. Mr. Armstrong was an apostle. And he was the messenger to the church in Philadelphia. If he wasn't uh, the messenger to the church of Philadelphia, then who was he? He walked through the door Jesus Christ opened. If he was not an apostle, and if he did not walk through that open door to do the greatest work, then everything these splintered groups have is false. Notice what Jesus Christ said to Mr. Armstrong in Revelation chapter 3. He says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it, for you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. God raised up one man, contrary to all those who out there hated that one man rule. You know, throughout the Old Testament, God used one man and only one man. In the New Testament, it was John the Baptist. Then Jesus Christ called 12 apostles. Then back into the 20th century, he used one man. And later, as the phase, the end of God's plan, he will use two uh, uh, prophets. Jesus Christ also said to his messenger in Revelation 3.10, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This statement does not include all those in the church of the Laodiceans, namely the churches of God in this era of Laodicea. You will not be kept from the tribulation if you do not hold fast to this truth. And there will be no excuse. And not only these books, but all the truth revealed by Herbert W. Armstrong. 
Of course, we understand by addressing the messenger to Philadelphia, Jesus Christ was also addressing the church in that era. However, those who hold to those doctrines, who study these books and all the truth, will be kept from that hour of trial, from the tribulation. Of course, these statements apply to those who faithfully supported the messenger in his responsibility, faithfully uh, supported him, and we faithfully support him today. And that faithfulness will be rewarded with protection from the hour of trial, as I said, which we understand to be the tribulation. However, Christ adds a proviso or proviso in verse 11. He says, hold that fast which you have that no man take your crown. As we look at the splintered off churches of God, yes, right around this world, I challenge one to stand up and show if they have held fast to what Jesus Christ restored through Mr. Herbert W. Armstrong. I challenge you, stand up and show me I'm wrong. Or if they believe that this man was an apostle with exactly the same authority and calling as those biblical apostles that Jesus Christ originally ordained and sent out. You know, by withholding the revealed truth, this revealed knowledge from the membership of the scattered churches of God, these ministers are likened. I'm, I'm telling you now, brethren, they are likened to the Cameron in Zephaniah 1 verse 4. Notice what he says. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah, spiritual Jews, and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the church of God. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of the Camerons, pronounced Kamar, with the priests. These black-clothed and blackened-faced men who attended the altar and the fires of Moloch, they passed children through those fires, these ministers in the churches of God today will cause God's children to pass through the fire of the great tribulation. Why? By not encouraging them to hold fast to what you have had and are taking their crowns. And they're taking those crowns, brethren, through deceit. Notice Zephani Zephaniah 1 verses 5. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship, and them that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm. Now hear verse 6. And them that are turned back from the Lord. They are turned back from holding fast to this knowledge. And those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for Him. Brethren, God is going to utterly cut them off. Cut them off, brethren. What should you do? First, recognize that you are not holding fast to what Jesus Christ restored through Herbert W. Armstrong. You know, one lady wrote and she asked, she asked the UCG why they repudiate Herbert Armstrong's leadership as one man rule. She received an answer from United Church of God that Herbert Armstrong was a leading minister. That's all. That's all. Like most of all the scattered churches of God, they refuse. They refuse to acknowledge his apostleship and that he was as much of an apostle as those mentioned in the Bible. They refuse that, brethren. They refuse the truth that Jesus Christ restored. Well, next time we will continue with this subject. This is Michael Venish saying, until next time, goodbye brethren and goodbye friends.